Welcome to Nursing School Explained and this video on head to toe versus focused assessment. This is something that I find in the clinical setting that students have a lot of trouble with really understanding the difference and also the similarities between the two. So I'm hoping that in this video I can actually clear up some of these confusions. The head to toe fashion, we always want to stick with a certain methodical approach so that we don't forget anything and focusing from the head down to the toe is really an easy flow of the assessment plus it allows us to kind of talk to the patient first, um, engage with them, build some rapport and then move on to expose some other maybe more sensitive areas that we need to. Where a focused assessment is more focused on whatever problem the patient is currently having. And um, in the hospital setting, that might be a variety of problems, but you can also encounter patients in the clinical setting, let's say in an outpatient clinic, if you're working in the community, those kind of things. Um, but the gist of it is that we always need to assess certain things whenever we assess a patient from head to toe, which are just like basic orientation, and I'll go into that here in a little bit. But then when it comes to the focused assessment, when the patient has a particular problem with a particular um, body part or, or body system, then we need to tune into that a little bit more and get into more of the details of that so that we can make sure that they're okay and progressing um, accordingly so that they can you know, heal and get better. So first of all, in any kind of assessment, we need our basic tools. And generally that means our pen light and stethoscope. And then of course, any PPE that applies to your patient care scenario. And then over here, I have outlined the things that we will always, always, always assess. You cannot skip any of these parts. And again, here we have our patient and we always focus on the head to toe. So we start on the top and work our way down. And so in the head, um, when it comes to the head assessment, we talk to them, ask them the basic orientation questions to assess their basic neural status and see how they're overall doing. And then we always need to assess their mucous membranes to determine the hydration status and also the color of the mucous membranes that may be pointing us into the direction of anemia or see any kind of other abnormalities in there. But really for the head, that's it. That's all we have to do there. Of course, if there are any obvious injuries or stitches or surgeries, then that applies more to the focus assessment that I'll be going with. But at the minimum, these are the two things that we need to do um, assess on the head. And then when it comes to the torso here or the upper body, so in the chest, we always need to, need to listen to the heart as well as the lungs, and that's both anteriorly and posteriorly. And if we or when we do listen to the patient's lungs in the back, whether that is um, having them sitting up or roll onto their sides, it's also a good opportunity to assess the back and specifically the skin on their back to see if anything's going on there. As you know, um, patients, especially in the hospital setting, might be prone to pressure injuries. So when they roll over, it might also be a good opportunity to take a look at their buttocks and their sacrum to assess for any of those pressure injuries there. And then another part in the torso is the abdomen. We always focus on inspection, auscultation, and then I put in parentheses her percussion because many times we don't do that, but we also palpate. We ask them um, about their last bowel movement and then assess their bladder for distension. And this is mostly for um, the patients in the inpatient setting where you know a lot of times they lay in bed and we need to make sure that they're not getting urinary retention. And then for the extremities, and that's really the same for upper and lower extremities, we always need to assess their muscle strength and their circulation. And the circulation is always assessed by their pulses as well as the cap refill. And so when we assess the pulses, we always want to check them equally or, or on both sides at the same time to check at their, at their equal, what's their amplitude. So they're, are they bounding or are they just very faint and as well as their regularity. And then in the lower extremities, we also check for edema. And then the upper extremities in the inpatient setting, this is a good opportunity to assess the patient's IV site. Um, and then as we go, we assess the patient's skin because when we look at their front and their back, we can assess their skin as we go. So there's not any particular skin assessment or we don't have to start from head to toe again to just assess their skin. So really, basic neuro, mucous membranes, heart, lungs, abdomen, back, 
extremities and skin. These are the minimum things that we always need to do. Now, if the patient is there for a particular focused problem, which most of them will be, and that doesn't matter if you're in the inpatient or outpatient setting, um, then we're gonna focus in or tune in more into the problem area that they are there for. So, when we have a focused assessment, so if this is a neurological problem, a patient, and these are just some examples, a stroke, head injury, patient with sepsis, because they might be, have altered mental status, um, and some other issues neurologically, or any kind of neuromuscular disorder, myasthenia gravis, Guillain-Barre syndrome, any of those that you can think of. Now, if they're there for any of these problems, then we need to focus more on the neurologic system by also, in addition to these basic things, assessing their cranial nerves, their cerebellar function, motor and sensory systems. Now, if they are there for a cardiovascular problem, and examples here include patients with hypertension, hyperlipidemia, any kind of cardiac issues, or peripheral vascular disorders, such as peripheral vascular disease problems with circulation, then we assess all pulses, not just the distal ones, so that's anything brachial, radial, carotids, femoral, popliteal, as well as the distal pulses, and then also assess for bruits, so in, particularly in the carotid arteries, maybe over their abdominal aorta and their renal arteries. And then for JVD, especially if they have cardiac issues, to see if they're fluid volume overloaded. Now patients with a focused respiratory problem, and examples here include pneumonia, pulmonary hypertension, or chronic issues such as asthma. Now, in addition to listening to their chest like we did, that we talked about in the basic things that we always need to do, we might want to percuss and also palpate their chest because, for example, if this patient had some sort of surgery or a pneumothorax, they might have subcutaneous emphysema. And so if you don't palpate, you're not going to feel this um, emphysema and you're going to miss out on something. And then we might also want to check the patient's chest excursion to focus more in onto their respiratory system. Now, if they are there for an abdominal problem, examples, bowel obstruction, GI, GU surgery, or any kind of patient with a feeding tube, and that might be particularly so in the skilled nursing um, facility where patients might have a G-tube or a J-tube or any patient in the inpatient setting with an NG tube, then we need to focus on their abdomen more. Um, and that not only pertains to IAP, and this is where the P here is in parentheses, so this then we would maybe also want to percuss their abdomen to see if there are any underlying things going on there. Now, a patient with a musculoskeletal problem, such as somebody with a fracture, any kind of extremity injury, or any kind of musculoskeletal surgery, hip replacement, knee replacement, whatever it might be, in addition to assessing all those things that we talked about here in the extremities, we also want to assess their five Ps, pain, pallor, pulse, paresthesia, as well as paralysis, and the range of motion if it's indicated for the injured or maybe even the not injured extremity, so we can compare left to right. And then um, the other thing is for skin. So this is focused assessment on the skin if the patient is there for some sort of injury or maybe a burn patient or somebody who has pressure sores or any kind of rashes, then we need to focus on into their skin more. Um, and that also pertains to surgical wounds to assess their reader. And let me add that here. And that is redness, erythema, ecchymosis, drainage, and approximation. So in, in summary here, we always want to focus in a head-to-toe fashion so that we don't miss anything. Then we always want to assess these things here because these are just the very basics. And this should really, with practice, take you less than 10 minutes to get through. And then if they're there for a particular problem, then we want to focus on whatever body system is affected and do the additional assessments that I've outlined here in the black boxes to really see how they are doing to determine any changes, assess them, basic interventions on these assessment findings and hopefully get the patient better so that they can go home and recover fully. Now I do have videos where I actually demonstrate the focused assessments 
of the neuro, cardiovascular, respiratory, abdomen, and musculoskeletal systems, so that way you can see what it actually looks like when we combine these basic things with the most focused, with the more focused assessment, and what that looks like, um, especially in these boxes, these additional things that we always assess. So thank you for watching this video. I hope this has helped you clear up any confusion about head to toe versus focused assessments and how we can really combine the two to really assess the patient well and make sure that they get better. Please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video. Also check out my Instagram page and I'll see you soon right here on Nursing School Explained. Thanks for watching.